creating emotional brand resonance. It's, it's something that the B2B market struggles with, actually connecting some kind of emotion to their brands. And um, the opportunity in, contact ma in content marketing for that is significant if you know what you're doing. So um, my name's Scott McKee. I'm the managing director of Bird Dog. Um, I'm also a columnist for B2B Marketing Magazine and the author of a couple of books now in the B2B marketing space. So that's what gives me authority to talk to you today, and that's why I'm, I'm doing the stand-in. Um, the services that we provide are in brand, content, social services, and, and digital strategy. Content is what the, uh, the topic of conversation is today, so that, that's where we're going to um, start. What I was asked to do uh, for this presentation is produce a case study that deals with content marketing focus, using social media and community management as the, uh, as the primary tools. And the objective in our case here was to create emotional resonance for um, a B2B brand. So that's what I was asked for, but what I'm gonna talk about broadly is a ball of string. Actually, we call it a fiver, and I'll, I'll tell you more about that in a second, and a loaf of bread. So you're wondering about the loaf of bread already, I hope, and the loaf of bread is required to introduce the client, because the client, I'm almost certain, you will never have heard of. Um, but their products, in many markets, you use every day, even though you don't know it. So our client in this case study is DSM. They're based in Holland. Um, their positioning line is Bright Science, Brighter Living, and that gives you an indication of the work that they do around the world in the life sciences and material sciences marketplace. So predominantly they um, handle ingredient brands, invisible brands if you like. Um, they provide ingredients for health and nutrition across a range of market sectors and a range of products. Um, they're sustainable, healthier, nutritious um, ingredients for better performing products. Just to give you an idea of scale, their worldwide revenues last year were about 9 billion euros. So it's a fairly big company that you've never heard of, and they have 22,000 employees. So um, there is scale there, and they are truly an international global brand. To give you some context for that, um, and the reason I was talking about the loaf of bread, um, is DSM is the world's largest manufacturer of enzymes of all things, that are invisible, but used in almost every baking product that you would use every day of the week. Bread, biscuits, cakes, any bakery product has probably got a DSM enzyme in it. Who knew? No one really, and that's, that's their main problem. And it's a problem across a range of their products, sectors, and a range of their brands. They have extended and extensive value, ch value chains, but people aren't aware of the brands that they, they supply to businesses and ultimately through to the end user. The product that we're working on specifically is DSM's flagship brand called Dyneema. It's not an enzyme, it's a fiber. It looks like a ball of string, but looks can be deceptive. And this is a, a high performance product it's actually the world's strongest fiber. Okay, so to give you an idea of what the world's strongest fiber is, uh, it's 15 times stronger than steel, weight for weight. Okay, so for the same piece of string to be made in steel, it would have to be a cable to have the same kind of strength. Its properties are lightweight strength, it floats on water, it's, um, uh, uh, used in almost every application across every market that you can possibly think of. And those applications keep growing, which is why Dyneema are very keen to attach their brand to the product. So it's no longer a ball of string, it's a Dyneema ball of string. And they're very keen to do that in much the same way as other ingredient brands have done in the past. Um, Teflon, for example, as a non-stick product an ingredient. 
I've shown some pictures there of applications for the product, just to give you an idea of the range. Um, in the aviation sector, it's used for netting to hold heavy loads in, in air aircraft cargoes. Um, it can be woven into jeans and fabrics to provide um, uh, abrasion protection for motorcyclists. Um, it's been produced as sails in the, in the um, yachting industry initially, but there's an image there of a giant sail being used to help super tankers, a sustainable way of helping super tankers across oceans, um, like a giant kite pulling them along. Um, and in other, in other applications for cycling and clothing and skiing, uh, again, it offers protection and strength um, for all of those markets. And the reason we're working with them is Dyneema recognized that B2B brands no longer have a single customer. Many of them still think they have a single customer, but in a social and digital world, um, there are many communities, many customers across value chains that need to be communicated with. So customers now are plural, whether you think they are or not, whether they're influencers or advocates or actual buyers. So our objective on this case was to harness an emotional response rather than a functional one. The functional abilities of Dyneema are unquestioned, scientifically proven. So this was about the emotional application of the brand through the value chain that would add value back to the manufactured brand itself. Okay. We recognize that every engagement now provides an opportunity to reinforce a brand name, the Dyneema brand. They are active, they have a, a robust marketing function, uh, but not necessarily in a community capacity using content to generate engagement for the brand. So we're no longer just talking to an individual customer, we're trying to talk across their connected networks and their communities in order to amplify the brand and create this emotional resonance. So what we're trying to achieve is the power of one, one individual communication being amplified to become the power of many within online community networks. The strategy that we're using to deliver that is our hub and spoke strategy. So on the left hand side there, you can see a number of um, online channels that you'll all be familiar with. You'll probably already have your own versions of um, those channels and tools that you use. Um, but the real trick is connecting them back to a hub. And companies tend to look at their corporate website as the hub, and it'll never work in a corporate website environment. So particularly if you're looking to generate community, uh, sorry, emotional resonance, we have to step outside of the corporate business face and into a more em emotional setting, a more dynamic, a more creative environment. And that has to be created. But once you create it, you're able to link the platforms and tools that you're using back to an area that you can attach uh, brand value to. So that was the challenge that we were set and the, the, stra the strategy we tried to implement. It's very much a content strategy. So the content strategy is made up mainly of content itself, using social media as the delivery platform and SEO to, to support that. The area that we're going to talk about now is um, content and social media. That's where the bulk of our activity is and the influence that we can have in building this emotional resonance. So we're trying to earn interest from a community rather than um, buying space in a, in a traditional um, media. We're trying to build relationships instead of selling a product or its functionality. So we're engaging. We're looking for ongoing communications with the available communities. And the problem with that, and the problem for many businesses, is at the top end of their value chain, it's often hard to do that because the audience either isn't engaged in, the, in a digital space um, or it's not well engaged. It's not a natural function. In the case of Dyneema, um, we had primary audience personas, as, as you can see there, of a very technical manufacturing nature. Okay? So we had to look deeper and wider. If we were ever going to build a community for this brand, we had to go wider and look deeper into the value chain to get everyone excited in order 
to, to bring that back to the corporate brand um, at the end. Now, that's quite a creative process. It's quite an intensive and lengthy process if, you, if you're going to invest in, in this kind of community building. So we looked at the applications for the product uh, and how it could be used. We looked at where the audiences were. So many companies start by opening a Twitter account or a Facebook page with no clue what they're going to do with it. We spent a lot of time looking at where the communities were, how they would be able uh, to find the people and the, the type of content that, that those communities would engage with relevant to the Dyneema product and the Dyneema brand. Okay, so in a connected world, your brand becomes the community hub, not your website, not even the digital asset that you produce. It's the brand that becomes a hub of conversation, of interaction. You're no longer selling a product to a buyer, you're engaging connected communities, and that's, that's how we amplify. Okay, so the content that you're planning, and you do have to plan the content, um, ultimately creates the conversations that, that are going to take the brand forward. It facilitates discussions, it enables more connections, business connections, um, it extends your network and reach, uh, and ultimately sets the brand up as a leader in its market space, uh, providing a, a position of leadership. So when we were talking to Dyneema, there were audiences that they knew already, the market sectors that they operated in, sailing, fishing, um, the armed forces, they knew that audience. There were audiences that they knew about. Innovation is a, is a strong part of the Dyneema brand. So they knew about how their product was being used for innovative purposes. Um, but there was a whole world that they didn't know about. We call them the crazies. Because they look a bit like this. Okay? And you know nothing about the crazies within your community online. But they know all about you. And the trick is, therefore, finding ways that the corporate business face can engage at a human level with their brand advocates and supporters. Here, let me show you a typ typical example of the research we were doing, and ultimately conversations that we started with people. This is the Terminator. <coughs> and we know quite a lot about him. Have, we've never met him. It's a guy that we found online. Um, he lives in Peterborough. He um, likes camping using um, a hammock with uh, a DIY cat with doors. I have no idea what that is. Doesn't matter. Um, and he uses the Dutch method of suspension. Sounds a bit rude, probably isn't, <laughs> in, a, in a camping environment. But we can start to find out about him already, and we know that he likes hammocks, okay, because he tells us this. And we found out about that on a hammock forum. Okay? There really is a hammock forum, there's more than one. You can tell he's crazy because he's got a knife, that's a photo of his knife, it's not my photo, it's his. Um, and he goes to places like the Antarctic, camping. Okay. And he does, it, he does that for fun. This is where he sleeps, in his hammock, uh, and he eats crap like this and cooks on a fire and stuff. Okay, these are his crazy friends. And do we know what he loves? You know, what he really loves? What he loves more than his knife? What he loves more, more than screwing holes in the ice? And possibly even more than scaring small children? He loves Dyneema, the brand that we're interested in talking about. He loved the lightweight strength of Dyneema so much that he carried um, a semi-rigid roll of it on his trip to the Antarctic and turned it into a sled. You can't really see it in, in the photo, but it wraps all the way around the pack that he carried ac across the ice. And Dyneema, for its lightweight strength, is his favorite friend in the Antarctic. And how do I know all this about the Terminator? Well, he told me. He told me online. So from that kind of example, we learned that customers' needs would drive business content, not whatever we thought at a corporate level. Okay, if we can engage those communities and provide the relevant content about the brand, we can connect them back to the Dyneema brand and therefore add value to it. 
Okay, so that was our cunning plan, and this is what we had to work with. It was kind of dull, so we changed it. Okay, we changed it through extensive content planning. People start with their content marketing with no idea where, where they're going. Um, you need to know where you're going if you're going to keep this up. Where we ended up was with an asset called Dyneema 360. Um, the tagline from the um, homepage on the hub is there. Innovation inspires us. Dyneema 360 shares the stories behind great ideas that make life brighter. We are not selling a product here. Okay? We are creating a community and engaging with an audience on their terms, not on ours. It looks like this now. That's a, a, a shot from the homepage. It's a lot more dynamic um, when you're online, and I encourage you to visit dyneema360.com and have a look at the work we're doing. Um, but essentially, it's like a scrolling notepad of activities and content, a whole world of Dyneema application and sharing of stories of innovation and application of, of the product itself. Okay, to give you an indication, some of the materials are infographics, some of them are um, congratulations cards, some of them are articles, interviews. There's a whole host of material which we also promote through alternative channels, relevant channels. So you'll find Dyneema 360 on Twitter and you'll find it on Facebook as well. Um, YouTube has just started as well, so we're starting to add live video content to the site. And the really interesting bit is what are we doing with this content? There's a whole load of it there about salmon fishing in Scotland. How is that relevant to our Dyneema brand? So, for example, what's this? It's a blog article. It's written on sustainable fisheries in Scotland. What's the connection? Well, actually, Dyneema fibre is used to make these particular fishing nets. So we have a connection. And why are we blogging into a community about com uh, fishing nets? Well, we're trying to engage the online fishing community, and we know it exists. We want to be part of that conversation, and we're trying to position Dyneema as a sustainable brand globally, so we're, we're communicating about that. Here's a video of the Puma racing team, sailing team, in the most famous round the world rot yet, uh, yacht race. Um, the video we produced about their challenges and, and how they deal with them as they race around the world. Um, the connection this time is that the ropes, the rigging on the boat is used by Puma. Um, using, sorry, is used by Puma using Dyneema fiber. And why do we do that? We sell a lot of rope into the sailing community. So we're engaging the online community for sailing, and we're positioning Dyneema as an action and adventure brand. An infographic highlighting rock climbing facts with a focus on safety and risks. The connection is that Dyneema fiber is used to make rock climbing rope and slings. So we're engaging another community and positioning Dyneema as a safety brand. This is an image shared for, um, for National Maritime Day. I'd never heard of it, have you? No. But the maritime industry has. Dyneema makes uh, giant ropes to secure super tankers at dock sides. It's an important industry for them, and we're connecting with that audience. Here's an interview, a two-part interview for innovation on a string bike. Uh, a new kind of bike that uses string instead of a chain. It's lighter, it's faster, it's more sustainable, it doesn't break, it doesn't get oil um, on your jeans, and the connection is that that string's made with Dyneema to provide a new way of powering cycles, drive shafts. Why do we do that? Well, it's new and innovation, um, and it positions Dyneema, it positions our brand as an innovator. So the web is huge and we are small. So to be heard around the world, we share our content on multiple platforms. All of the content lives on the hub, but we're able to deliver it um, across various channels as appropriate um, as we build um, momentum for the, uh, for the program. Um, 
channels you've heard of. Pinterest is new. We're using that for, for visual images and so on. So where it's appropriate, we use it. And suddenly, from just small pieces of content, we're actually reaching a worldwide audience. Does it work? Here, here are the results for you. Um, we were kind of flatlining when we launched. At the end of the first month, uh, we'd made a small impression to the world. Um, but it's growing, and I think that's how you have to treat your content marketing program. Allow it to grow. At the end of month two, and we're starting to make progress, and at the end of month three, we're doubling everything. We've just started month four now, and the, the, the stats are going the same way. So when you rack up the progress over a three-month period, you can see the kind of community growth that we achieve. Okay, there's no sign of that stopping, and we will go from strength to strength. We're also tracking customer advocacy on the back of this, what people think about our brand. Um, that's how the client's measuring us, and we're measuring community sentiment, yeah? Whether it's positive or negative feedback that we're getting on the, uh, uh, on the brand activity. We're monitoring competitive performance. We're able to do that. We can see what the competitors are doing online and benchmark ourselves against that. I can't show you those figures, but come and talk to me afterwards. Um, and we're making a lot of new friends, okay, as we literally engage with individuals at a personal level, at an emotional level, to drive the Dyneema brand forward. Yeah, the communities are engaging with us and their networks. We are engaging with them and their networks. And so it grows. And it's all about one thing, the corporate brand. And the content just keeps coming. I hope that was helpful. Um, please talk to me afterwards. I'll be here all day. <laughs>